Hey there, today we will be talking about the continuity equation. Besides the fact that it has many applications in different branches of physics, in this video our goal is to just talk about the first two, that is electromagnetism and quantum mechanics. But before that, let's start with the generalization. So consider a volume V and for simplicity let's consider a sphere as our surface. Now consider some charges coming out of it. And this is often represented with a vector field called J, which is equal to the density of that charge or maybe any quantity times the velocity. And this also relates with the rate of flow of Q through the closed surface, which is given by this surface integral. All right, now let's think about the rate of change of that quantity q. What will it be? Well, in terms of calculus, it will be dq over dt. And this will be equal to the rate of production of q, which we call it capital sigma, minus the rate of flow of q through the closed surface, which we just saw is the surface integral. And this is represented by this beautiful equation. Now, in terms of continuous variables, where we include some densities, this rho is the quantity density and this small sigma is the rate of production per unit volume. And using the Feynman rule of integration and some divergence theorem, we get this beautiful equation. Now, considering the terms inside the integral gives us this equation. And then we will think about two cases. So in most of the physics, you will often deal with conservation laws, which will give us this sigma to be zero. That then gives us this beautiful equation, which we were telling in the starting of this video. All right, now let's see the particular case of electromagnetism. Here we will consider two cases, one is charge conservation and the other is energy conservation. So let us start with charge conservation. Again consider some volume V, it doesn't have to be a perfect sphere, it can be anything. Then we write the current as the negative derivative of the charge which is represented by this integral. Then we convert the integral using Feynman integration. And then we write this equation just by equating the two terms. Again using divergence theorem. And comparing the terms inside integral, we get the same equation again. Okay, now let's see energy conservation. In energy conservation, uh, the derivation is a little big, but I'll let you go through it. And in the way, I will just explain what the terms would look like. So first let's consider the force on a small charge in electric and magnetic field then consider the work by it. And then we will use the work energy theorem to support us in the process. And just using that, we get this dW is equal to du kinetic. du kinetic just means the kinetic energy, but it's a differential kinetic energy. And this can be written in this way. Now this dL vector can be written as V dt because it's a small displacement. Then separating out the terms and making the second term to be zero because two perpendicular vector when dotted with each other gives us zero and we get du kinetic to be this thing. Now again converting them to uh, dividing it by dt and then converting it back to continuous terms where we will replace the q by rho dv integral we get this equation using j is equal to rho v. And then we will say let's consider u small u kinetic as the energy density, kinetic energy density more formally, this gives us 
partial u kinetic over partial d is equal to j dot e. And then we will use one of the Maxwell's equation to help us get an expression for j. Now substituting this in the first equation, we get this. And then we will use a vector identity, which is this big expression to help us. And then we will get partial u kinetic over partial t is equal to this. Now by using Faraday's law, you will just say del cross e is equal to negative partial b partial t, which gives us the above equation. And then we will use this fact that dot product of a vector with its partial derivative with respect to time is this quantity. And then we will get this expression if we apply it for electric and magnetic fields. Then the term inside is often referred as the U field, which is the energy density stored in the field. So U kinetic plus U field is kind of like some total energy density, U total. And these two equations looks a lot similar. So we just flip the sides and you see U total is the energy density, the total energy density, and S is what we normally know as the pointing vector. All right, now let's look at the particular case of quantum mechanics. We often know that in quantum mechanics, the norm square integral over the whole space of your psi wave function is one. But my question to you is, if I know that this holds true for one time, let's say t equals to zero, how can I say that it also holds for any other time? So to prove this, what we will consider is we will let's say that this norm xi square is some kind of probability density, let's call it rho. Then we define some n of t is equal to this integral. And what we will try to prove is that dn over dt is equal to zero, since that is essential to prove that n of t is constant and is equal to one. Now along the process, you will find two results that del dot j is negative d rho dt and where j is this h over m imaginary part of xi star gradient of xi. Now here's the challenge. Prove that this holds true. And what is the process that is governed here? So that's a challenge for you. Comment below your opinions on how we get there so that I can know uh, what is your thought process. So till then, uh, have a great day and uh, goodbye.